Yes, so one of the most um, common questions that I'm asked is about gessos. Um, besides from why we need to put gesso on, the fact that is there an easy way to actually make gesso yourself at home? Now I put a few recipes out there um, on YouTube, which I'll put um, up there in the iCards. I'm just dolling my rubber gloves. But what I thought I'd show you today is a quick, easy recipe just to make a small amount of gesso, which could do quite a few canvases on its own. So you don't need to make piles of this stuff. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the ingredients very quickly, and then I'll show you how to mix this at home um, with mostly with what you've got. So the ingredients you really need, all, all that gesso is, is basically um, some chalk or some sort of gritty textured stuff because that's what gives it that that grab to the surface of the paint we need some water and we need some binding agent something like um a resin which is this is a, a container of pure acrylic resin or something like a, a polymer vinyl acetate again that is very good um as as a binder this is what we need some sort of binding it's going to need some color um normally gesso is white um, so what I tend to do is use something like this. This is just a matte white emulsion paint uh, for walls and ceilings. Um, it is acrylic based, um, so you should be okay with that. So what we need to do is firstly get uh, our container. And I'll show you a couple of different methods of this. So I got three different types of chalk. I got a calcium carbonate chalk. That's just a standard chalk. You could get some um, chalks. From the store grind them up and you'll get that uh, similar type of texture that's a, a, like a coarse texture i've also got there some um, champagne white um, chalk calcium carbonate that's actually uh, used for traditional gessos with um, um, rabbit skin glue and stuff so it's a bit of a whitening then it's it's um it's a finer grade of that um, but this is tends to give a little bit more colour. You'll see that this the, the, the gesso using with this there rather than that is a lot whiter. And the other one I've got there is um, fine grade marble dust. Similar type of thing but this is actually um, ground marble dust. Um, you've got to be careful breathing that in because it's very very fine. Now you can get away with talcum powder at a pinch if you want if you haven't got any of that and you haven't got any chalks at all, you can use some talcum powder. Even, um, I suppose you could use some baking powder, anything like that you could use. Um, but I, I tend to stick to the chalks because that is the standard. So what I'm gonna do is get my container there and I'm gonna put some paint in So there. when I'm making um, a small amount of paint like this, that's basically what we're doing. Um, I just want to eyeball things rather than use accurate amounts. So um, to this pot, I'm going to get a little bit of paint that I just mentioned. Here we are, put a bit of paint in. That's one teaspoon, two teaspoons. You can see why I got gloves on. Three teaspoons. <laughs> So it's approximately, let's just say, let's just say that's 100 grams then, if you want to go down that route. So we'll go 100 grams of, of paint in the pot and on the scales. <laughs> so that's roughly that much, look, like roughly a quarter of a pot or a quarter of a cup if you want. I don't know if this is classed as a cup, but quarter of a pot. So to that, um, I now need to add um, some of my binding agent. I'm going to be using some of my um, my resin because this is quite expensive so if we zero the scales it just makes life easier so we can see how much we're putting in don't want a lot of this but just about 60 grams of that there we are i am getting in quite a mess here today but it doesn't really matter i quite enjoy getting down and dirty um or you could use some poly polymer vinyl acetate as i said there you go some polymer vinyl acetate use that and I'd use a bit less, I'd use about 40 grams of that. 
and, and I'll just get a stirrer and I'll just stir that in like this. So let's just mix in now the paint and the binder together. So we've got our colour and our binder mixed together. So there's our paint basically. So don't forget this is just going to be a gesso. Right, I'm going to just clear this away. Okay, so give that a nice little stir like that. Now lifting the paint up like this, you can see it's not running. It's quite thick. Now if you want a thick paint, that's fine. But what we need to do is add a little bit of water to that. Again, eyeballing this. So we just want to add a little bit of water at the time. And then just mixing that in. And then checking to see if it runs. So we just add, keep adding the water. This is once you've made a batch of this, you get used to it, and um, you can make a lot more, a lot easier. So it's quite simple, really. This is all gesso is, and you can scale this up if you want to make uh, a batch of this. And just a little bit more water, just how to. Just experience now, this is just my experience. There we are. Just a little bit at a time, it's like mixing paint. There we go. Don't over add, otherwise it's, it's, it's easier to thin than what it is to thicken. We don't want to thicken the paint. We don't want it to be too runny. We want a nice coverage of color. So you see, see the drips. I'm quite happy with that. So selecting whatever chalk you've got, it could be um, baking powder or anything like that. I'm going for the champagne chalk. And I'm basically just gonna tap in a bit of chalk like that. You don't want a lot of chalk, but you just want enough grab with this gesso. So you can see how much I've got in that pot. So this is going to thicken up your paint as well. Well, I quite like a chalky gesso. I quite like something with a when you paint, you can hear it scratching across the surface. And that's all gesso basically is: is paint and chalk used traditionally um, throughout the centuries with rabbit skin glue and uh, a whitening. And um, it basically seals the canvas and prepares the canvas then to take the paint as well. So use traditionally an oil painting really. As a gesso, I think we are just about done. So there we are. There's a quick way of making a small amount of gesso, even just with baking powder or talcum powder. I'm sure we've all got a bit of paint spare. We've all got a bit of glue or something, some school glue, wood glue, anything like that. It's all polymer vinyl acetate. Um, and then we've got a nice gesso, nice white, bright white gesso that we can use on our paintings. There you go.